Hello grade 10s, today we are going to design a worksheet to calculate our personal income and personal expenses in a small household and understand how a household budget works. We are going to begin by joining Lebo and her friends. They have been collecting information through a questionnaire on how their peers spend their pocket money. Lebo wants to use this information to justify asking for an increase in her allowance. Let's see how they are doing. Phew! At last we've organized the data from question two of our questionnaire. This table shows the mean average amount that learners in our year spend each month on entertainment, tuck and snacks, toiletries, stationery, savings and gifts. Hmm, it's very clear from the table that tuck and snacks is what most learners spend their money on. The mean average amount spent on tuck and snacks is 64 rand, and the next closest value is for entertainment, which comes in at 52 rand. The data shows that most learners are spending most of their money on these two categories. You're right, and this is a very important point to make in your argument, level. You estimated that you spend 30 rand on tuck and snacks, and that's less than the average we worked out for the sample group. Are you sure you were right? Actually, I was just guessing. I think I buy two to three cold drinks each month and usually a box of popcorn when I go to the movies. So 30 rand seemed about right. Maybe, but I've been busy on something you might also want to try. I've worked out a savings plan for my allowance and I record everything I spend my money on in this little notebook. That sounds like a lot of work. At first it was, but I've gotten used to it. Well, it makes it easier to, to make decisions on how I'm going to spend my money and saying no to certain things or spending my money without thinking. Let's see the spending plan of yours. It sounds like a cool idea. Well, I've only been keeping it for a few months and I've been able to save a little at the end of each month. I want to buy my mom something special for her birthday. I can see how this could be really helpful. Maybe if I kept track of how I'm spending my money, I wouldn't run out of it so quickly. That's only one part of the plan. The other part is to think about what you want to spend your money on and think if you really need it. I like that idea. I often have regrets after spending my money. How do I start? Well, in a way, you've already started. Now, the categories on the questionnaire for question two are actually quite useful. Now, the next part is to go on an imaginary shopping trip. On the trip, you decide what you really want and what you don't want. Now, it's decision time. You could watch one movie with popcorn and drinks or go without popcorn and drinks and have enough money to watch two movies. Now, instead of making a decision at the movies, you make a decision at the beginning of the month and you stick to it. I enjoy planning and look forward to doing things that I've planned to do. That's a practical idea. Yes. I think I should try drawing up a spending plan for next month and see if I can make my allowance money last longer. I think you'll find that it does help control your spending and it will also help convince your parents to give you an increase. I'm not sure I follow you. Well, drawing up a spending plan will show your parents that you're thinking seriously about how you're managing your money. Once you've made choices about how you want to spend your money, you can first work out the costs of those choices and see if you can really afford them. You may have to change what you want to buy, but at least you won't have to run out of money because you're still just planning. I think I need to do the spending plan too. Great, let's work on it together. I have an idea that might help us divide up the money we get each month. We take small pieces of paper and then let them represent 10 or 5 rand. We write what we want to buy on a piece of paper in pencil and then estimate how much the item will cost. <laughs> nice idea. Okay, I've got 12 pieces of paper here and this represents the 120 rand I get from my parents each month. I will write entertainment on five of these pieces of paper. Tuck and snacks on three of them. This leaves me with four pieces of paper. I'll write gifts on two of them. 
and then savings on the last two. You're doing well, Lebo. Why are you allocating 40 rand to gifts and savings when you could use it for another fun outing? My parents like me to save money each month, and I say I like the idea too. It gives me a little extra money to spend in the holidays. The gifts category is also a kind of savings plan. My parents sometimes give me extra money if I'm invited to a birthday party of a good friend, but I like to buy something for my family on their birthdays. You can't get much for 20 Rand, but saving a little each month does help. That's good thinking, Lebo. I've also included savings into my spending plan. I want to buy a sound system next year, and having a goal makes it easier to stick to the plan. I see. The spending plan needs to look like a month ahead or even into the future. You're right, Tabo. You do need to look ahead. But of course you can always change how much you spend on certain things. But you always need to remain focused on what your medium to long term goal is. I like that. Flexibility. If I plan to change how I spend my money, I can. For example, I can spend less on tuck and snacks and more on entertainment. Now, that's another reason why you always need to review your spending plan. I mean, the prices of things are always changing. It helps me make decisions at the beginning of each month. What happens if you allocate 10 Rand to buy two cool drinks, but when you get to the shop, it actually costs 12 Rand? Now, that's where my spending plan comes in place. I make choices in line with the plan. Now, if you really want two cool drinks, I can find something in the plan that I can do without, like chocolate. I can either have one cool drink and a chocolate, or two cool drinks and no chocolate. I can see how the spending plan of yours will be really helpful in keeping track of how I spend my money each month. I also think my parents will be sympathetic to giving me a raise once they see I've been trying to manage my money. I like this idea more than the popularity argument of our questionnaire results. But we can link them together, Lebo. If you can show your parents that you're spending less on tuck and snacks and entertainment than other learners in your grade, and you're saving a little at the end of each month, they'll be very impressed. But most importantly, you'll be taking control of how you spend your money. If you stick to the plan, then you won't run out of money before the end of the month. We've made a good start in our spending plan by using the pieces of paper. Maybe we can add a little more detail, like the prices of the goods we want to buy. I agree. Dividing our spending into large categories is a good place to start. But we need to add more detail to it by putting on prices on the things we want to buy and saying exactly when we're going to buy them. I've already started making a list. All we need to do now is go and check the prices. Let's go shopping. <laughs> Lebo and her friends are certainly making progress in developing a plan on how to spend and save money each month. The business plan that the friends have been discussing is called a budget. Many people drop a budget at the beginning of the year or month to control both their personal and business finances. The Minister of Finance also presents the national budget to Parliament each year. He gives an account of how much money the government plans to collect from taxes. I hope you'll think and plan carefully before you spend your money. It was interesting to see how Lebo and her friends manage their income and expenses. It's good to draw up a budget so that we always know how much money we have. Income is money that comes in. It can be grouped as either fixed income, variable income, or occasional income. Fixed income this is income that is usually a constant amount that is paid every week or month. A regular monthly salary, wages, and a pension are examples of a fixed income. Variable income is income that is not a fixed amount but is also sometimes paid every week or month. An example of this is commission earned by a salesperson when they make a sale. Occasional income is income that is not regular, nor is it always a fixed amount. Examples include inheritance and gifts. Expenditure is money that is spent. There are high priority expenses like home loan repayments and municipal accounts, and there are low priority expenses like entertainment. If our expenses are more than our income, we will be running at a loss every month. In other words, we will be spending more money than we earn in. This can be fixed with good financial planning. 
My friend Aviwe has been struggling to manage her money. Let's look at her budget and see if we can help. Aviwe has started by creating this table to list her income on the left and expenses on the right. Let's see what she spends her money on. Her only source of income is her salary of 6,500 Rand a month. Her expenses are listed in order of priority. This means that her rent of 3,700 Rand is the most important bill to pay, and entertainment is the least important. She saves 100 Rand a month in case of an emergency. Her income and expenses are exactly the same amount. This means that she spends every cent that comes in. Having no money left from your income is not a good thing. If the rent or any of her expenses increase, where would a viewer get the extra money? She would not be able to borrow money as she would not be able to afford the repayments. Often people start with a tight budget like this one, and when their circumstances change, they end up in financial trouble. Let's see what would happen to her budget if the, her rent were to increase by 10%. 10% of 3,700 Rand equals 370 Rand. A viewer will have to spend less money somewhere else to afford the new rental price. Let's look at her budget to suggest where. The first expense that people usually cut is their savings. Do you think this is a good idea? It doesn't look like there is an easy way to fit in the increase in rental. On any budget, it is important that expenses remain reasonable in relation to income. The rent forms a large part of a viewer's expenses. Before the increase, it was nearly 57% of her salary. With an increase of 10%, this makes the amount of money spent on rent almost 63% of income received. Let's see how we work this out. A 10% increase on the rent gives a total cost of 4,070 Rand. To find the percentage of the income, you divide the 4,070 Rand by 6,500 and multiply by 100. This gives you 62,615 and some percent. Rounded off to two decimal places equals 62,62%. Her rental has become too expensive to afford. She should rather look for more affordable accommodation. Remember I asked earlier if cutting her savings would be a wise decision? As you should now be aware, it is never a wise decision to decrease savings. Having an emergency fund is a very important part of planning. An important part of financial management is keeping track of all your expenses. Setting up and sticking to a budget is the first and foremost important step in becoming financially secure. I trust that you are now comfortable with household budgeting. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember, the task for this section can be found in the Finance Task video. You will also be able to learn more about finance on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.